Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this simple chip and dip plate. So to get started, you are going to roll out and compress a large slab of clay and you're going to trace the outside of one of our smaller bats and that's going to be the base of your chip and dip bowl. And then you're going to cut out a circle. I use the bottom of a plate and I have this template for you to use. And you're going to cut that circle from the first circle you cut out. And that little piece will be the base for your dip. So the big part's for the chip and the little part's for the dip. Then with the remaining um, piece of clay, you're going to measure out the width of um, these yardsticks and you're going to cut a bunch of strips. And then you're going to actually just use these to be the walls of your platter. So you're going to just lay them um, on, make sure it's um, not too wet or too hard. If you, they're too hard, you won't be able to bend them. If they're too soft, they're gonna collapse. So ask your instructor if you're not entirely sure um, if you got the right consistency. And then you're gonna cut your pieces at a 45 degree angle to attach them together to make one long strip. You're also going to scratch and attach the whole way around your base and along the strip. This way you can make sure your pieces are securely attached and don't fall apart during the firing. So attach them on there all the way around, including the inside circle. Once you've scratched and attached all the walls to your um, little platter, you then need to reinforce again using some coils, um, either snakes or slugs, you'll hear me say all three, um, on the inside um, base and wall. I just roll out some thin coils and I actually dip them in some water just to make them a little more flexible because I'm using the leftover clay from my strips and then I just squish those in between and compress them together. That way I've just extra reinforced my walls to attach to the base just like scratching and attaching does. Otherwise it'll just all come apart and we'll have been a waste of time. So I also take little tiny slugs and I put those over the um, strips that I attached um, that attach to each other and um, compress those together to try to get rid of that seam. And then I'll also do it in these corners so that it looks like one solid piece. Um, and what you saw there with the tool, I went in with those slugs there and um, just press them with the tool because I couldn't get my finger in. Now for the inside piece, I should have used more than one strip that I cut out, but um, I decided to just do it based on one strip so that I had, so it's just to save me a little time. So I cut these at a 45 degree angle scratch and then um, added some water and attached everything together. And again, uh, reinforced with more clay um, coils on the inside. When I'm done reinforcing these, um, I just use a sponge to compress it down and clean up. And then I used um, one of my razor blades uh, to uh, remove the excess clay on the outside since I made the ring inside smaller. And then I just am going to check to make sure this still fits inside my original piece. And then I'll let these set up in front of the fan. Um, once these have set up uh, for a while and they are more towards a leather hard consistency where I can't really change the shape of them, I'm going to compress everything down and clean them up. Um, one of my favorite tools now that I've been using a lot is the shear form and it just helps shape things without removing too much clay or having to be too precise like you would with um, a razor blade with like an exacto knife because it takes off small amounts of clay at a time. Um, so I put my um, corners together with that and make it look like one solid piece and that's it. 
a simple hand building project. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.